motivation, and perseverance. Do you have it? Many writers tell me that they struggle with motivation and perseverance, which makes writing a book or writing the next book kind of problematic. <laughs> hello, 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 I'm Autumn Bardo. Thank you for joining me today. Here you'll find writing tips, author tools, and hopefully even a little inspiration, motivation, or perseverance. I've got a lot today. Deep writer stuff. A lot. Buckle up. But first, you know the drill. Please subscribe to my channel. Click that little subscribe button and that notify button. I'm not really good with that SEO search engine optimi optimization. <laughs> I can't even say it, optimization stuff. So I rely on my subscribers to share, to comment. That all helps get me out there so that new writers like yourself can find me. I hear it all the time. Writers tell me they aren't motivated. I bet you've seen about a million posts uh, on Facebook groups too. Or sometimes writers will tell you that they need to find motivation. Like you can find it like it's lost. Motivation. Where are you? Author tip. If you want to find writing motivation, it's on aisle 15 at Walmart. Writers also discuss perseverance, the, the actual getting it done. You've probably seen a lot of Facebook posts from writers and authors about that as well. I know I have. I think it's a pretty big writer, author struggle, if the comments are any indication. I'm often asked, Autumn, how do you do it all? And I think, um, let's keep it real. I'm an overachiever, but wait, you know what? I really, I hate that phrase overachiever because it feels like I achieve more than I am capable of achieving. And that's, I don't know, that's kind of a slam. I don't know if overachievers struggle with motivation and perseverance. I think we have that kind of like baked into the cake of our DNA or something. I, I don't know. If you're an overachiever and you still struggle with motivation and perseverance, drop me a comment and let me know. And I do. I don't, I don't want you to think I don't struggle with motivation and perseverance because I do, because there are times, because life, you know, life happens where you're just like, I just can't get this done today, or I'm just going to put it out till next week or next week and next week. And that's definitely motivation. And I think it's entirely different than inspiration. So you have the inspiration, it's just the motivation to do it, and then the perseverance to keep doing it. When I was researching this episode, and I, I did research for it, I realized some stuff about myself, which I'm gonna kind of share, um, kind of sprinkled throughout. Maybe you'll learn something about yourself as well. If you've watched my channel before, you know that I like taking complex things, the big complex thing or idea or n novel how-to and break it up into smaller doable parts. It's just easier that way. It's more understandable that way. And I frankly, I think it's more achievable, doable that way. And we're, so we're gonna do that with motivation and perseverance. I research motivation and all the research suggests that it re motivation requires three things. Autonomy, that's doing it yourself, learning the skill and doing it yourself. For writers, I think autonomy comes from the actual learning of the basic skills that you need to write a book or to write a story. The basic writing skills you learned. It's a lot of what this channel is all about. Helping new writers, beginner writers, you know, whatever kind of writer you are at this point and breaking down the small parts, making them more understandable. You learn them and you learn the skill. So that's writing. If you're self-publishing, I think the autonomy part is all about learning how to format, keywords, categories, editing, all putting it all into the different platforms, KDPY, KDP Select, 
all of that stuff. Oh, I forgot cover design. You can learn all that or you can actually pay somebody to do all of that for you as well. So don't despair if you're like, ah, I have to learn more stuff. If you want to go into the traditionally published field, if you're trying for that, then it's learning how to find the right agents and going on publishers marketplace and learning how to perfect your query. And then if you get an agent and you're signing on, you know, you're signing that document, what are you actually signing? And then the actual whole thing after you get an agent of your book being shopped, going out there, and then that whole publishing world itself is its own kind of learning curve. So no matter which way you're going, indie or trad, there is a huge learning curve. A lot of things to learn. The next part of motivation is mastery. Mastery. And I think you know where I'm going with this. For writers, it's learning the things that you need to do to write a great story to pro-level writing pro level. That's mastery. That means that a person who picks up your book, a reader, they can't tell the difference between your indie published book and a pro writer's book that is traditionally published. If you're an indie author, I think the mastery also has to deal with social media, interview, all the things that the professional authors are doing? Does it look like theirs? Do their ads look like theirs? Are they engaging with audiences, um, you know, professionally? Are, is, are you engaging professionally as well? So I, I think that's mastery. And if you have a agent and um, your book is out on sub, then you already have those pro skills and if you're just a little bit under it, then you're definitely going to get those pro skills by the time you go through a couple edit processes and you'll, aha, this is how I'm going to take it and level it up yet again. If you're an indie author and you're looking for mastery, you can hire pro level people in their field. People who professionally do categories and keywords, who are pros. That, I mean, that is their business at doing cover art and graphic design and formatting. So big difference between the formatter who can sort of kind of format and then the pro level formatter. Same goes with editors. The third part in motivation is purpose. Mm -hmm. Purpose. Why do you want to master this skill? Really, is it an unchanging purpose, a gut purpose, a soul purpose? This is different for everybody, but it has to be a real reason, not a superficial one, not somebody else's purpose for you, not their dream for you, your gut soul purpose, the purpose that feeds you, not a misguided purpose. And you're probably thinking, what's a misguided purpose? I'm going to write these novels and I'm going to be famous and I'm going to merchandise and everybody's going to want me and I'm going to get a Netflix deal. And uh, maybe if you're super, super, super lucky. Otherwise, why are you really writing for fame and fortune? Because, yeah, not a good plan. So what is your purpose? If you think you can make a lot of money writing, think again. Only the very, very, very few can do that. Very few authors earn a living by their writing. And yes, I know you're going to tell me all the people that you saw on the Facebook groups who are earning so much. And sometimes I think, okay, you're earning, you know, 40 or 50,000, which great. That's amazing. You can't live in California for that. <sighs> Sorry. Or you can't live well. I think the best purpose are intrinsic purposes. That sole purpose that I talked about earlier. The satisfaction comes from doing it. Not money or fame or glory. Just, I wrote a book and I love it. Okay, that's motivation. What are you struggling with? Let me know in the comment section below. Is it learning storytelling skills? Is it all the indie author formatting KDP stuff? Is it mastering pro-level writing skills? And a purpose. 
Do you have that purpose, that soul purpose, that gut purpose, that purpose that just makes you feel like, I want to write and hey, maybe somebody buys it and that's great. But if not, I told the story that had to get out. Okay, so we broke motivation down into those three parts. Now we're going to look at perseverance and let's see what the dictionary has to say about that. The dictionary definition is the continued effort to do or achieve something despite difficulties, failure, or opposition. Did you hear those three words? Difficulties, failure, opposition. Yeah, that's perseverance. Which one is your nemesis or is it all of them? Okay, so let's first look at difficulties. Writing and indie publishing or traditionally publishing all come with their own kind of difficulties and plenty of them. How do you handle them? Here's a quick story and maybe you can relate. So I was having some tech issues with, I think it was my computer or KDP, whatever, it was something and I couldn't figure it out and I was getting so frustrated and there was, I couldn't ask anybody be, because it was just one of those things where like, I just, why isn't it doing this? I did the research, still couldn't figure out what was going on. And so my daughter called and she's pretty tech savvy, right? She's like, mom, just like walk away from it. Just walk away. Don't get so angry. Don't get so frustrated. Just walk away. And I said, I can't walk away from it. It's, a, it's not something I can just put off for another week. It needs to get done now, 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 or tomorrow now. I just can't just put it off. And if I walk around for a couple hours, it hasn't helped me figure out what I'm doing wrong. And I need to figure that out now. I think we, I think we see a lot of these kinds of panic questions um, on the various Facebook groups. They're panic, a difficulty that came up. Somebody can please help me with it. I can't figure it out. And those are things that we just have to surmount. We have to figure out and figure out what to do or do a workaround or something. And I think, yeah, it comes with plenty of difficulties. So prepare for the difficulties, budget them into your time. Here's what I've come to realize is I, I count on difficulties. I can take those difficulties to the bank. <laughs> Whether it's me trying to get a certain background on an Instagram, you know, like I've posted this YouTube or something and why won't it change color to, I don't know, trying to load it and go wide. You just have to learn, you have to figure it out. And for me, I know it's going to take X amount of hours plus some because there's always some kind of snafu I didn't bank on. Don't be surprised by difficulties. Count on them. The next one in the perseverance list is failure. Oh, nobody likes to hear that word. Mm -mm. One learns through failure. You know that. We all are familiar with that whole Edison quote, right? He didn't find one way to do, I don't know, to, to make a light bulb. He had like a million different failures. I, I don't know what it is, but you know which one I'm talking about, right? So we're, we get that. But somehow we hear the meme, read the meme, and it doesn't like transfer into our brain. I, I don't think it does. Failure is part of learning. I tell this to my students all the time. And you know what? They don't like it. And neither do we. Failure hurts. Failure is aggravating. Failure just does something to our egos. And if you fail, other people look at you and go, failure. Nobody likes to fail but failure is actually how you learn. Expect to fail multiple times. And that's why when you have a failure with whatever it is, whether it's posting on social media or blogs or your book or advertising, you need to like figure out what you did wrong and don't do it again. If you failed and you didn't learn from it, the failure was pointless and you're gonna be given it again. Failure is meant to teach you how to do something better. Embrace the failure and see it as an opportunity to learn. The next is opposition. Yeah, opposition. 
Some writers face opposition from their friends, mm -hmm, from their families. They tell us not to waste our time writing. Or maybe they interrupt you all the time. That's kind of passive aggressive behavior. What's the saying? If you're not for me, you're against me. Yeah, opposition. Maybe the market is your opposition or your search engine optimization or your keywords or your categories. Maybe those are all oppositions or trolls that are leaving too many bad reviews. Or maybe the opposition is your inner critic. If you don't have one, oh, I should probably do a video on that too. I'm gonna write that down right now. I think having an inner critic is really good and that's what I'm gonna do my video on. Just wrote it down. But maybe your inner critic is the opposition. You're a tough customer, admit it. You're hard on yourself. Do you have the courage and the guts to move past all of the opposition because each of those oppositions takes maybe going a different way, finding a different path or moving past it or just, you know, fighting your own inner demons. I think it's taking all those different kinds of oppositions and giving them the metaphorical middle finger. I think that might be the right attitude to take. I do. I do. And sometimes it's not even metaphorical. Sometimes it's just me throwing out, you know, the two middle fingers to whatever technology I am currently fighting with. <laughs> I know, it's stupid, but it makes me feel good. Expect opposition. My husband is on totally on Team Autumn, but there are times when I'm making videos or I'm writing and he's talking to me and I'm like, hello, writing here, go away. Or... You know, my son, who is also really amazing and helping me out with everything, you know, he's in his room and the games are really loud or his music is really loud and I'm making a video and I knock on his door and I'm like, hello, making a video here. So they're not oppositional, but stuff comes up that just, ah. Uh. Opposition makes us stronger and more resilient. Learn to pivot. Learn to find a way. Make a way. Hack down that whatever is oppositional with a metaphorical axe. Whack! You can do it. Okay, so what did I learn about myself when I was researching all of this? There have been times when I stare at the screen, I'm working on a draft, and the scene just isn't coming to me. It's just It's not coming, it's not going anywhere. It's just, I'm, and I'm just, I'm having trouble with it. And so I just stare a lot at it and then I just get frustrated. And I have a couple techniques, which I've talked about in other videos for kind of breaking through those things. But a lot of times I'll just get up and I'll walk away for a very short time. A lot of times it will take me hours to fix something and the fix was never easy and it took a lot of work and a lot of brain power. But you know what? I think the story is always better for it. So it was worth it. I've had a lot of failures too. Maybe I'll do a whole episode about everything I failed at. Hey, if you want that video, let me know in the comments section below and I'll tell you my 10 years of failure, um, what I learned from them and um, hey, why I'm still here, <laughs> despite them. But despite my failures, and me wailing or crying or gnashing my teeth or whatever I did when I was failing or upset or whatever, I moved past it and that's what you need to do. I had the perseverance, I moved past it. There's to me like no other option. I don't want failure to win, it will not win. I think there's another element of perseverance that wasn't really in the definition or the dictionary definition and that is to keep yourself accountable. I think this is a biggie, at least it's a biggie for me regarding perseverance. I give myself deadlines. Yeah, they're made up deadlines for sure. They're my self-imposed deadlines. As an indie author, they're self-imposed. 
for my traditional work, um, you know, the, the publishing house gave me the deadline. But I also had my other deadlines because I didn't want to go up to their deadline because, you know, life happens and you never know. So my deadline was always about a week before their deadline. Do I always hit my self-imposed deadline? No, no, not always. But I'm never really more than a week or so off. Maybe a month tops because you know life once again it, life does happen and then our deadlines are like yeah well <sighs> didn't see that one coming give yourself deadlines make deadlines achievable doable deadlines i really really i really believe in this like with all my heart specific deadlines work best um i'm going to be doing a whole series where you're going to just i'm going to share my thoughts as i'm writing my next novel and you're going to see that I'm actually give myself self-imposed deadlines. And so you're going to have to watch the video, I think maybe next week for my self-imposed deadlines. It keeps me accountable and I schedule it in. I'm more likely to schedule in the time if I give myself the self-imposed deadline. Then when I hit my deadline, I reward myself. I do. You need that. It's like, oh, good girl, you hit that deadline. Being a writer, being an author, it's not easy. But I think for most of us, it's not an option. We must write, the story must come out. Buckle up, it's a roller coaster ride. I think the slow chug up is worth that, whew, that thrill, that total thrill when you crest the top and you're like, whew, fast and free. Motivate. Which of the three parts of motivation do you struggle with? Let me know. Or is it perseverance that you struggle with? <laughs> Let me know. Or is it both? Because sometimes I think those are like kind of pretty like tied together. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And remember writers, to dream, create, and embrace. Thanks. Bye-bye.